We'd like to introduce you to a revolution, a revolution unlike any other throughout the history of mankind. This is a wealth revolution, and it's going global. Did you ever think that you'd be able to benefit from the only real time-honored investment mankind has ever known? Real estate. Real estate investing has only ever been accessible to a small percentage of the world's population. This is no longer the case. The wealth revolution means that wherever you are on your wealth journey, be it taking your first steps or taking off globally, you can join our global community. A community of real estate investors just like you. The Global Wealth Group is experiencing exponential growth and wealth has never been this accessible. A truly global wealth revolution. We dream big and our dream is to impact the lives of a billion people. One billion people. How will we do this? Through groundbreaking digital platforms that allow investors like you to take part in exciting real estate investment opportunities. These opportunities are waiting for you everywhere, anywhere, worldwide. Now you can invest in real estate with any amount of money, from the comfort of your couch or your internet device. Introducing our global brand ecosystem. Wealth Create, Wealth Migrate, Wealth University, The Wealth Movement. Hello to everyone. Hi, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are joining us from. And thank you for spending the next hour or so with us as we discuss business growth and scaling with Scott Pickens, CEO and founder of Global Wealth Group, Aubrey Turner, our CEO of Wealth Migrate, and Marikin Jansa van Fieren, who heads up our marketing department. Thank you for joining us this evening and making yourselves available for our webinar to our attendees. Now, just before we get, uh, Lee, I just wanted to say I'm I'm intrigued by what they're going to share, so I'm looking forward to it as much as anyone else. Absolutely, we've been seeing snippets of it throughout the week, and it is very exciting. So we are glad that um, they are online, but more glad that you are going to be hearing about it tonight. So before we get started, I just wanted to share what we are doing in a partnership that we have going. Um, at the moment and how you can engage and actually spread this a little bit further. We have a partnership with a company called B1G1 based out of Singapore and they have got global causes aligned with the World Health Organization that they share in. So just for attending tonight, everybody has donated one day of free education for someone in need across the globe. But as we go through our webinar tonight, any comments you make, any questions you ask, anything you want to know, even just saying hi, please could you use either the letter E, the letter W or the letter T um, after your comment before it, anywhere in between, not part of the statement though, um, and it will let us donate either a day of education, a day of free water, or we will plant a tree on your behalf through B1G1. So please, any comments that you make, queries, anything that you wanna know, any way you interact with us tonight, please use the letter E, W, and T. So to start th things off, we are a global uh, company with a global community. So we would love to hear where you are joining us from tonight. So please do chat, put into the chat box where you are coming from. I am still based in Costa Rica. Scott is coming from Durban tonight. Um, Aubrey is in Cape Town. And if I'm not mistaken, um, American is coming to you from St. Francis, also in South Africa. Then you will notice that we have got the Q&A um, facility activated tonight as well. So please drop your questions in there. Um, the chat is great. We will trawl through the chat as we get towards the end of our webinar to make sure there's no questions, but it is easier for our panelists to actually see them if you drop them into the Q&A box. So with that, I'm going to hand over to Scott for a very exciting and much anticipated webinar. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Lee. And yeah, please, uh, please get involved in the engagement. You know, I think it's one of these things where we can all create the world we want to see. So thank you to all the people that are coming through. Um, there's lots of names uh, which we really appreciate. So wonderful seeing seeing you all online. So just to remind you, we have sort of gone through this each week. We are going to be doing a webinar next week with Willem van der Post, where we're going to go into this in even more detail. 
But you can see at the bottom here, you've got time on the left-hand side, you've got company value. You've got the infamous S-curve. And this is all about scaling. This whole webinar series is about scaling. You've got the startup phase. You've got the scaling phase. You've got the, the mature and the listed phase. Then you've got kind of how they funded. The kind of founder seed investors, the venture investors, the large funds and corporations. These tend to be post-revenue pre-profit. And these tend to be you know, predictable lower growth and, and dividends in terms of the overall process. We're sitting here at the moment and we're going to here. And how do we do it? Well, there's four things that one needs. You need capitalization, you need scaling skill sets, you need discipline and frameworks, and you need investor activism and evangelism. Often while this takes place, you've got leadership changes, you've got reorganization. Willem talks about the three T's, terminate, train, and transfer. And he says in the scaling high growth phase, you've only really got time for terminate or transfer. And then, you know, the real need for investor activism. And I think what's quite important when you look at this in terms of the overall graph is that we raised money on Cedars in early 2019. So Q2 2019, we did it with Wealth Migrate, that is our global real estate marketplace. We've subsequently achieved product market fit. We raised two and a half million dollars and we invested in building our tech, our digital wallets, our supply, our due diligence and our global compliance. We dropped our minimums from $1,000 to $100. And we grew our distribution to 83 affiliates, 13 channel partners, seven strategic partners, and two country partners. We've now got members in 171 countries, investors in 69 countries. We facilitated over $1.2 billion and had over $100 million go through the platform. And that's why we believe that we're now perfectly primed to scale. What does it mean and what is our growth strategy? Well, it's threefold. We've got a distribution strategy. So Last week, we spoke about how to source new strategic and distribution partners. And I'd highly, highly recommend that you go and watch the webinar, both from a WealthCoin perspective, our B2B, our Indian partner, which is a geographic partner, and Sharia Wealth, which is a genre partner. Tonight, we're talking about our own distribution and how we're building it through the virtuous cycle. All of them, it's about increasing our conversions. So it's increasing the number of transactions and it's reducing the cost per transaction and then it's investing in the technology. I'm not gonna go into this in a huge amount of detail. We, we dealt with it in detail in the webinar for two weeks ago, but in simple terms, we've got three phases that we're going through. Phase one was where we were dealing with high net worth investors, $100,000. We steadily worked down to $1,000. We just learned how to build the platform from a technology banking and compliance perspective. We're now in phase two. It's all about scalable operating profit, there's a dual strategy, both a B2C strategy with our current marketplaces, specifically Wealth Migrate, and then a B2B strategy, which we discussed last week. And then in 2026 and beyond, we will go into the true Wealth Meta marketplace where we blend together both local and global. And if people want more information on this, I can talk about it in the Q&A. So the final slide that I want to share with you before we get into the meat of tonight is at the heart, we've got our technology. And that's our wallets, our global compliance, our due diligence, our regulation, and our tech. You can see we've got global marketplaces and local marketplaces. We've got real estate, diversified assets. We've got genres, and we've got community. We started with building Wealth Migrate. Then we built out the Wealth University, our learning platform. We built out the Wealth Movement, our community. We then launched Wealth China back in 2017. We did a private equity. We've done three private equity raises for Genius U. And they are currently listing on the New York Stock Exchange. We did Zusa, which is a UK-based platform. We did Cashbox, which is a structured note. And then towards the middle of last year, we launched Private Wealth Global, which was our premier brand, our kind of first class on an airplane. And that's really where we ended last year. We, in the beginning of this year, are looking to bring out a small genre-based focus in yachts and wealth. But our two major focuses are Wealth India, which is a geographic play. And again, I highly recommend you watch the video from last week to talk about the partners we got in India. One of the potential partners has 1.15 million high net worths and 60 million retail investors. And we spoke about how we can scale. We also spoke about our technology and how it can do 15,000 transactions per second. And then we went on to talk about Sharia wealth and the massive opportunity that sits around the world with 25% of the world's population wanting Sharia compliant product, and yet only 5% of the world's population 
sorry, only 5% of the world's financial products actually being compliant. With time, and we're going to talk about this tonight, we're going to grow out all the different geograph geographies and genres. So just to be clear, we've got the technology at the middle. Last week, we spoke about our partner distribution, our B2B strategy. Tonight, we are dealing with our B2C strategy and primarily out of Wealth Migrate. And so it's with a huge amount of excitement that I want to introduce both Aubrey and Murrican. And I think it's probably better if the two of you introduce yourself. But tonight, the real focus is that these are two of the leaders that are driving our B2C strategy. And they are going to share with us not only how we're planning on growing the Wealth Migrate community, but actually as part of the bigger global community. So Aubrey and Murrican, over to you, if you wouldn't mind just giving yourself an uh, introduction so everyone knows who they're dealing with. Perfect. Thanks so much, Scott. Um, and welcome to everyone here this evening. It's a pleasure to, 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 to chat to you. Um, my name is Aubrey Turner. I am very recently the, become the CEO of Wealth Migrate. Previously, I was in charge of the marketing. Um, and fortunately enough, we've managed to grow an expert team in marketing. And I've managed to, I've been fortunate enough to hand that over to Murrican um, and run more of the general oper operations of the business. Good evening, everyone. As already said, it's a pleasure to be here tonight, and we want to welcome you onto this webinar. Um, I'm Marika Janssen from Firen. I've worked with Aubrey previously, and I'm lucky enough to aid up the marketing team for both of these exciting um, businesses, which is Global Wealth Group, the holding company, and Wealth Migrate, the proof of concept. Brilliant. And I think both of them are being quite shy in giving you their previous background, which they both come from uh, a number of different digital uh, companies. And so they bring a lot of expertise that I really appreciate where they've had previous digital marketing and rollout B2C strategy that they're effectively bringing to us. And so that's why I joked right at the beginning, but I'm as intrigued by this webinar as to everyone else, because we've got some really exciting things to share. Marikin, as we move forward now, do you want me to stop sharing and you take over or do you want me to just uh, take the slides? I can share, Scott. Um, that's not a problem at all. Over to you. Thank you. So the mandate, just while Marikin's bringing this up, the mandate that we spoke about a couple of weeks ago was that we've been through our B2B strategy and obviously that's how do we 10x our growth through scale and partnerships. And then one of the things that we've been trying to do that I understood a couple of years ago is the whole flywheel concept from Amazon. And I had said to Marikin and Aubrey, well, what's our flywheel concept and how do we plan to scale, you know, within our own marketplaces? And this is really um, the work that both Marikin and Aubrey have done uh, to share with us what is our BTC strategy to scale. Perfect. Oh. Great. Um, so let's kick this off. Amazon needs no introduction. Um, their CEO and founder, Jeff, created the popular growth strategy called Flywheel, as Scott has just explained. So based on this core concept of a virtuous cycle, a flywheel takes a lot of effort to move initially. But once it starts, it gains momentum and quickly spins faster. So the real thing here is to get that wheels turning and moving so that it can snowball into something much larger than itself. Um, and to grow and scale both the Global Wealth Group and Wealth Migrate business, we decided to map out our own virtuous cycle with guidance from the Amazon archetype. Um, we looked at how our virtuous cycle turn, what the various sequences um, look like, and how we move our different drivers to create an unstoppable momentum because growth and scalability is at the end of the day, the core of what we're trying to achieve. So Scott has explained the Global Wealth um, Group in detail. Scott, I'm not sure if you want to give a quick overview before we move um, into the virtuous cycle for the Global Wealth Group. Well, again, just, just to repeat for everyone, so Wealth Migrate is our B2C marketplace and Wealth Point is our B2B strategy and, and it's our technology. So I have already explained that tonight. 
Global Wealth Group is our holding company. So our shareholders sit in Global Wealth Group. Because tonight is about the ability to invest in our holding company, we talk about the Global Wealth Group. But it's not a brand that we necessarily have out in the market because out in the market, we have a B2C strategy with Wealth Migrate and a B2B strategy with Wealth Point. But the Global Wealth Group is the holding company. It owns all the IP, all the assets, and is where all the shareholders sit. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Scott. So without any further ado, let's move on. Our starting point is our wealth point technology, as Scott just mentioned, um, which powers our meta marketplaces. Wealth Migrate is one of our meta marketplaces, and it's our flagship um, platform, which is also our proof of concept. While um, wealth point provides a white label solution to property partners, financial planners, institutions, um, and strategic partners in both genre and geography sectors. We built on the significant demand and distribution for supplying the same product across various active marketplaces, um, both in genre and in region. So that leads us to our active um, marketplaces. And this touches on some of those marketplaces you've seen in Scott's slide earlier. We have partnered with entrepreneurs um, who built their own marketplaces on our technology, WealthPoint. So these partners, along with an increase in transactions on their platforms, lead to increased revenue for our business. So far, our meta marketplaces extend to Wealth India, Wealth China, Wealth South Africa, Wealth UK, um, Wealth Australia, Wealth America, Wealth Europe, Women and Wealth, Shariah Wealth, Wealth Create, and of course, our flagship company, Wealth Migrate, which we'll get to in just a few seconds. So we are looking to grow this further in region and genre, as just mentioned, for more robust diversification. Our active partners made us realize the importance of cultivating an entrepreneurial community, which then becomes the next stop in our, in our cycle. So seeing our wealth point technology as starting point and wealth migrate as our proof of concept, we have extended our entrepreneurial community, adding value um, to entrepreneurs and our business. We are developing various personalized content touch points for our active partners. We are also in a unique position and this is something that every marketer craves for, um, where we have our partners contribute to content in our webinars, articles, and even success stories. The type of organic and paid content becomes a powerful touch point um, in potential investors' conversation, uh, con in the potential investors' conversion journey. So leading to more transactions for our marketplaces powered by WealthPoint which I just mentioned leads to more transactions and more transactions means more revenue for our business and who does not like more revenue. An increase in transactions on various active marketplaces using WealthPoint allows us to negotiate better partnership deals for investors on multiple platforms. Thanks to growing demand for active deals, we'll see an increase in traffic to our various marketplaces. This will gain momentum and lead to a more attractive option to future active partners, allowing us to sign up new active partners and to diversify our marketplace offering even more. An increase in deal demand and a variety of deals hosted on WealthPoint technology will help us to continue growing the marketplaces that have already signed with us which leads us to our entrepreneurial ecosystem. Um, to exp expedite our growth, we have started to go beyond having only an entrepreneurial community by focusing on creating an entire entrepreneurial ecosystem. Um, we did this by developing additional support for our active partners and our marketplaces. The one thing that Wealth Migrate also allows us as an active marketplace and our flagship is to really trial and test new um, strategies. Um, and if it works really well, we can then roll it out or build on that um, to better service our active partners. 
we created the Affiliate Boost, a semi-personalized marketing package for entrepreneurs with a very competitive fee to assist them with setting up and running their, their platforms combined with support of an experienced marketing team. Entrepreneurs had the option of various packages um, based on different services, pricing models, tailored to suit multiple active marketplaces and different marketing needs. Our meta marketplaces, such as Wealth Migrate, are funded fundamental revenue drivers that now operate within the competitive landscape um, of our partners' active marketplaces. We create a smaller marketing cycle to increase higher intent investor traffic and um, conversions within our entrepreneurial ecosystem. This is a prototype um, that can later be leveraged for additional marketplaces. So this can also be built on. We are currently trialing it for um, Wealth Migrate. So we develop a wealth movement. We've developed wealth movement, a networking event, allowing like-minded people to build relationships and network while introducing them to our various offerings. Um, from here, a potential new client can directly become an investor with Wealth Migrate, as you'll see um, if you follow the top, top circle. Um, but sometimes novice investors don't trust their judgment or feel confident enough to make investment decisions, especially if it's a new platform for them. So to full, fulfill that need, we started Valve University, which is the below circle, if you follow on from um, Wealth Movement on the left. This allows investors to upskill, guide them to make better investment choices, and teach them how to build out their portfolios using our marketplaces. While attending Wealth University, we fund an investor's digital wallet for their first time investment with Wealth Migrate. Um, showing confidence in our product gives an investor and giving a, an investor risk free um, risk. Well, I won't say risk free, but a risk adverse first investment to kickstart their journey with us is really where we struggled. The goal of the entrepreneurial ecosystem is to drive more traffic and transactions for our own platforms as well, because at the end of the day, we are growing our own um, marketplaces as much as we are helping our partners grow their, grow their active marketplaces. More traffic and transactions then becomes the next um, point in our in our virtual cycle. So high volume traffic and many verified members on various active marketplaces will lead to more investment in our deals. This results in higher revenue and greater demand for deals. In turn, it allows us to negotiate better deal partners at a higher limit deal investment with a broader deal variety that is more likely to result in consistently solid returns at the end of the day we want everyone to diversify their portfolios so that leads then to deal demand and this will help us negotiate firm deals with strong partners to ensure deals are fully funded and we will be able to negotiate a higher limit of investment per deal going back to our wealth point technology strengthening our deal offering for our active marketplaces and investors will help us improve deal deals of it and keep our technology competitive because at the end of the day we now competing in a very crowded marketplace and although it's for our own benefit we still want um, our marketplaces to succeed as our demand for deals increase we will provide specialized and unique deals per marketplace we will then further add value to the various active marketplaces by helping to differentiate the deals even more not only will we will this help us grow and scale, but it will ensure we stay ahead of new competitors. And when I say um, it allows us to decide which deals goes on which marketplaces, at the moment we have a lot of deals running on our marketplace. But as more deals come on board, we will actually have that option to see which deals suits which type of investor for which marketplace better. So Wealth Migrate's introduction. 
Um, I'm going to hand that over to Aubrey, our CEO, to quickly walk us through it. Um, Aubrey, I'm just going to keep the slide open um, and then I'll just move on when you're done. Perfect. Thanks so much, Marikin. Um, just as a comment, something you said that I absolutely love is unstoppable momentum. I think that's an, an excellent um, narrative to the evening and the plans that we are we are pushing through. Um, so I'm sure everyone on this call, most people on the call know what Wealth Migrate is. We are the Global Wealth Group's firstborn child. Um, and we've grown up, we've removed our braces, we've gone through our education, and I feel we are at a place now where we are ready to scale and really take on the market. Um, in terms of what we do, we are essentially a commercial property investment marketplace, real estate investment marketplace. We also um, deal a little bit with alternative assets, which will be coming later on down the line this year. Um, so it won't only be real estate and property that we are um, playing in. And how we facilitate this is through technology, and the technology allows us to crowdfund investments into these deals. Um, I think the investment space has been living in a cave for a long time, and it's about time that someone's come around and really sort of shook it up and changed it. Um, and there are a couple of players that do local local deals for local investors, but we're one of the only ones that I'm aware of that are doing tangible, real assets on a global scale, um, which I think is really, really exciting. Um, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it. I think I'll be a lot more helpful when it gets to the Q&As and we're actually talking about the direction. Thank Thanks. you, Aubrey. Very well summarized. Um, now I just need to get my presentation to move forward. There we go. Um, so where our technology was the starting point for our, our global wealth virtual cycle, our customer experience um, and our content touch points is actually the starting point for our wealth migrate purchase cycle. So our starting point is our customer experience, which comes down to our virtual meta marketplaces, our place and our content touch points. So these meta marketplaces should be easy to navigate and trustworthy. Trust is a big thing um, when it comes to investing money on a platform, especially when it's digital. We should always have live deals customers can invest in with good custom, um, with good variety of deals. And that touches on what I mentioned earlier, as our traffic increase, um, the demand for deals and supply increase with it. Um, for example, an existing medical office building in the USA might seem like a good investment for one, investor where another investor would look at more a co-living development space in Australia, or one investor might want to invest in a 12-month um, investment where another investor wants to invest in a five-year long investment. So there's, there's um, power in differentiation in deals as well. So this content aims to educate, engage New educate our investors, but also in, um, engage new markets and guide funnel conversion, both paid and organic. Verified members is then our next step. So one of our um, key strategies for Wealth Migrate at the moment is verified members. Increased traffic leads to verified members and therefore more transactions. So we are implementing marketing automation to assist with down funnel conversion and have an entire team to help new members through the verification process. Some of that marketing automation consists, but it's not limited to trip campaigns, um, how to videos, and really just making sure that a new member has all the information they need to verify their um, their portfolio so that our sales team can actually focus on having meaningful and impactful conversations and not necessarily leading people through how to become a verified member. So as I mentioned, um, transactions is then our next stop and increased transactions are our primary goal to grow Wealth Migrate as a business. Um, through transactions, our business generates revenue. Once new members is verified, targeted marketing has been put in place to urge them to invest. Once new members have invested, further marketing persuades them to reinvest in order to, um, in, sorry, to reinvest in other deals um, that we have on our platform because at the end of the day, um, someone that reinvests and comes back 
trust us, but they're also not um, an investor we pay to get on board. So, um, yeah, I think that is that is a big one for us is to get um, our members verified. And I should probably not mention numbers here, so I won't. But I um, spoke to our data guy today, and it seems like our cycle of getting um, investors to actually invest is becoming shorter, which is a good um, point for us. Um, and we'll continue to shorten that that time from coming from an investor to um, uh, coming in from, as a member to an investor. No, so that good. leads, yeah. Hey, sorry to cut you off, but if I can add, our, our customer lifetime value um, is basically um, increasing with what we can see. So we, we are we trending in a good direction and our repeat customers are also increasing um, that percentage. So we've got a um, percentage conversion rate from lead to repeat customer that we work on and we, and we go towards. Um, and that's looking really, really good. And our lead to verified member um, conversion rates are also surpassing our forecast for the year. So I, I personally blame Murrican for these um, improvements in, in numbers. The brand, um, the brand um, sort of trust and loyalty and, and um, sort of relevance in the market has gone up dramatically since we got Murrican and, and the marketing team on board, which we've just managed to put in place, I think, um, last year. August around there I'm not 100% sure mm -hmm. so yeah she's 100% responsible for these numbers increasing and I think this, she's done an excellent job at getting them there thanks Aubrey that's blame I'll happily take um, <laughs> moving on to supply which is a big thing in keeping a business going and we are working very hard with the global wealth group to increase supply and deals on our side by creating demand with a wider variety of investment deals. So if the demand is fair, we can actually put more deals on our side. And that's something that is starting to happen. So all of this, I just want to point out as well, everything that we're going through is things that is currently in process. It's not years down the line. It's not pipe dreams. It is wheels in motion um, as we go on. So to expedite our growth for global, uh, for wealth migrate, we are making our deals even more accessible with an even lower entry point. Now we can accept deals for just under $100 um, USD. That wasn't always the case, but we are working to get that investment amount down to as little as $10 USD. So with a lower entry point, we will ex exponentially grow our numbers of transactions leading to even more demand for various on-site deals, which is a very exciting um, space to move in because increased transactions is something that we aim to do, um, which leads to more deals on site. And that is a happy place where we want to be. As transactions increase and our success stories help to establish trust because we're now moving into a space where some of our older investors are actually starting to see the success of their wealth generation over this time that we um, moved from start point to where we are now, as already said, we're losing our braces. Um, those stories become even more powerful because it's people speaking about what they can actually see for themselves. And it's not us blowing our own horn all the time. It's actual tangible success. Um, that people can see on our platform. And as we gain our customers' confidence and they're able to see their wealth grow success, successfully, they will be um, compelled to invest significant amounts and start investing in a variety of tools. And I want to point out that's something we are seeing as well at this moment. Um, as investors come back to reinvest, the second amount they invest is significantly higher than the first amount they invested because they've now seen proof of, um, of this platform working for them. And then I just want to um, finish off by saying, this is a work in process and we're all working very hard to get realize this, but it's also not a pipe dream, dream. It is something that is happening at this moment. And we do realize that growth doesn't um, happen by itself. So to ensure we reach our growth goals, and scale up our business. We've incorporated three disciplines within our leadership structure to keep us all honest. Um, the first one being purpose-driven meeting ribbons. Um, 
The second being clear business priorities through objective and key results. So we have very strong OKRs. We know what our North Star metrics are. We know what we're working towards. And then the last being KPIs, using data and metrics to guide our decision making. Um, so with that, um, it concludes our Wealth Migrate virtual cycle and the Global Wealth virtual cycle. We would love to take your questions and answer them all. So um, I'm going to hand over to Lee because I do think she has a few questions already lined up that she can ask. Just before, just before you go there, Lee, I just want to emphasize the way I understood Amazon and the logic with Amazon was that the more they drop prices, the more customers they got, the more customers they got, the more buying power they had, the more buying power they had, the more customers they got, you know, and, it, and it kind of that was the virtuous cycle. And our, our you know, in, in real estate, in property, it's the same thing. The more money you've got and, and you know, whenever you, I always used to joke, but whoever arrives with, a, with their checkbook or their wallet is going to get the best deal. So whoever has more money is going to get access to better deals. But the better deals you have is going to get access to more investors and more money. And, and that, you know, that's this virtuous cycle that Marikin's been, been sharing. And one of the things that's so nice about our model is that our technology at the core, our due diligence, our compliance, our supply, that can all remain the same. That can all come through the same system. But the distribution can happen at multiple levels. So the cycle can play out on itself over and over again. And we can grow the distribution side on top of the you know the the supply the technology the compliance the regulation and to some extent we explained that last week where the value has been built at the center and now it's about leveraging that value absolutely and thank you for the presentation uh, scott american and aubrey it is great to see our business in motion and it is always exciting to see how it all fits together. So I do have a few questions that I have got for you guys. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to jump right in and then we will check the Q&A box to see if our um, attendees have put anything. So Aubrey, the first one I'd like to pose to you. Um, and if increased traffic is the ultimate goal at the end of the day, what parameters have been put in place to achieve this? Um, so yeah, interesting question. So we are... We are doing, a, it's a little bit of a twofold approach. So the one is demand generation and the other one is um, just sort of like a lead generation approach. On the lead generation approach, we are fleshing out um, performance media, paid media campaigns within South Africa. And we have just launched into Europe about five to six weeks ago. Um, we are already seeing those cycles in Europe um, in terms of leads coming in and becoming verified members, becoming really, really short. The shortest we've ever seen in our history. Um, we had a lead last week come in as a lead, um, become a verified member and fund money in their wallet within three days from a Monday to a Wednesday, which is which is absolutely incredible. Our previous times and cycles were, were within like 90 days, 120 days. So they're really coming down. And then um, what Marikin and the team are working on really, really hard is the demand generation. So instead of hunting for leads and searching for leads, we are putting content out in the market, educational content, and actually trying to drive and grow that demand for the product that we have. And the reason there isn't really that much of a demand currently is because people don't know about the product we have. It's not a product that's out in the world. It's not like, you know, you're buying a toothbrush. People don't know that it's, a, that it's around and they're not, they're not aware of it. So we're spending a lot of time trying to create that demand channel um, and making people aware of it. Um, yeah, and that's that's basically it. We've obviously got um, personas and targeting metrics that we look at and that we're trying to flesh out to make sure we we achieve our revenue numbers. But but in in essence, it's twofold, and those are the two two prongs. Thanks, Aubrey. That was very comprehensive. So just on the back of that, and speaking about numbers, and I'm I'm directing this back to you, Aubrey. Um, is that if you are, um. How, how are you going to uphold your average investment amount if you're decreasing the minimum investment amount? How does that work? Or are you just going to try and get as many people in as possible at the lower amount? Yeah, Lisa, that's that's the rock and the hard place we sit at the moment in terms of operations of the business. I would love to just open up the floodgates and let every single person invest from $1 
but there's an operational component to it. Um, our poor KYC team and Cisco would probably drive around to my house and strangle me because she doesn't live too far away. Um, so we are we are playing a balancing game. We need to increase um, transactions. We need to increase users on the platform. And we see users come in at a second investment, like Marikin said, quite a bit higher than they came in um, the initial investment. So a lot of guys, a lot of people come in as, as sort of a test a month to make sure money comes in. Um, so we slowly, slowly lowering that and 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 sort of like sliding the scale up. We want to make sure that we keep the the higher net worth people happy, but at the same time, we want to try and try and address the the retail market. And again, we're doing a lot of that through education. Um, at the retail market, we're trying to automate the retail market as much as possible. So people come in at ten dollars or fifty dollars, whatever we lower the the investment to, um, and we will be lowering it lowering it quite soon. There is plans in place to lower it from a hundred dollars. Um, we want that to be automated so that doesn't affect our team at all. But then we've also got a team of um, wealth wealth consultants, essentially um, high net worth account managers that deal with the guys that have that have high net worth, so we can keep that high net worth amounts coming in. Um, so so yeah, it's also a twofold strategy, and um, we also deal with on the B two B side as well, trying to get affiliates in as well to keep that number up. Thanks, Aubrey. Um, so Scott, um, I know that. Sorry, um, Lee, do you mind if I just answer Gavin in the chat in the um, box? He just asked while I was talking, what countries are we focusing in? So at the moment, Gavin, we are focusing on South Africa. Um, in terms of performance media, uh, we have just gone live in Amsterdam and we've also gone live in Finland. Finland is a test. Amsterdam is doing really, really well for us. And then we are starting to try and drive demand within Africa. And the reason we're doing demand within Africa is we don't want to spend money in Africa because we know the high net worth um, community in Africa isn't as big as the, the 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 amount of leads we'll end up getting if we actually done driving um lead generation so we know it'll be like a thousand leads for one or two high net worths and yes it'll be worthwhile but it'll take a much bigger operational team to get through that and I'm also busy researching um Ireland and, and those sorts of countries and we're desperately waiting for UK compliance because we we want to pull the trigger on UK quite quickly as well. So for now, it's not a massive base because we we are expanding slowly and we're trying to keep the the, the uh, customer acquisition costs down. But we are slowly expanding that. And if you have any ideas, please let me know. Just by the way, I was in a meeting today, Aubrey, where um, they were raving about the demand out of uh, Kenya. So I haven't had a chance to tell you that, but uh, uh, probably worth looking into. Definitely, thanks. I think the one other thing that I tend to say when you look at the minimums, you know, if the minimum investment's $100,000, if you want to fly over to America and see the property, I'm just using America as an example. If it's $10,000, you want to spend months, if not, well, weeks, if not months, doing due diligence on the company. If it's $1,000, you'll probably do it on a referral from a friend. If it's $100, you'll do it, you know, even at the dining room table or the dinner table. And once it gets to kind of $10 or less, you know, literally people can can dip their toe and and there's a lot of science that's been done in this. You know, that's why Cedars and Crowdcube and all of them are all minimums of 10 pounds because it, it's such a low amount that people can, can get going and participate. And so it's very much what Aubrey and Marikin are driving towards. However, just verifying what, what Aubrey said is that there is still a human component to the KYC side of it. And so we're trying to digitize that whole process so that we can increase the conversions. So Scott, I know last week we um, hosted a webinar where we discussed partnerships to scale and we discussed country partnerships and we discussed genre partnerships. But could you explain how new marketplaces are found and how they are being brought on board? So it's an interesting question, Lee, and I'm not 100% sure. I just want to clarify your question. So when you say new marketplaces, there's two types of marketplaces. We've got our internal team marketplace. We've got, let's say, Wealth Migrate. It's an internal team. Um, we're driving it. We're driving that marketplace. If we're bringing on Sharia Wealth as an example, then it's about the partner. So it's all about the partner. You know, I don't know a hell of a lot about Sharia compliant products. I'm not a mufti. I don't really understand that Islamic community. And so our, our, our strategy at a global wealth group perspective is to have organic growth where Aubrey and the team are driving what's happening at Wealth Migrate. So we can consistently be learning what is best practice. And then we can be sharing with our B2B partners how to actually be able to execute and deliver and to equally put into place that best practice. But I have had one or two shareholders, as an example, say to us, 
but aren't you being defocused? You know, you can't do lots of different things all at the same time. And it's very important to clarify that our team is doing one thing. Our, our team is driving the B2C marketplace, which is Wealth Migrate. We then partner with entrepreneurial teams and to use Murrican's language, it's entrepreneurial communities and entrepreneurial teams that have their own teams with their own passion, their own purpose, their own leadership, and they execute, but using our infrastructure. So I'm not sure, Lee, if that answers your question, but it's a, it's a tricky one because if you take Sharia Wealth, we've obviously come across GIFs and we're looking to form a strategic partnership there. In India, we've been trying to get into India since 2019. We finally got Ish on the ground and are now forming a strategic partnership there. Uh, something that I am very passionate about and would love to launch as soon as possible is Women and Wealth. But we need a strong woman leader with a woman team that wants to drive that. And so often for us, it's about finding the right partner. I mean, we know the genres we want to go into, but we've got to find the partners to execute. Great. South Africa, sorry, just quickly, South Africa is another good geographic example. We've got the compliance, we've got the supply, we've got the digital wallets, we've got the regulation, like we've got everything. We could literally launch South Africa tomorrow morning, but we need a local team with local focus to deliver and execute on South Africa. And until we find the local team, we can't launch the South African solution because otherwise the global team will get defocused trying to do everything. That's a very good point. And by segmenting it like that, the focus happens, which allows the scale. So then Aubrey, I'm going to flip this back to you. Seemings, you are our flagship and our child, as you mentioned earlier. How do you keep Wealth Migrate competitive against the increasing landscape um, with GWG and WealthPoint bringing on external marketplaces? Um, it's a great question, Lee, and it's something that um, Marika and myself have been scratching our heads on quite a lot because we realize, you know, um, I mean, we don't know what the growth of the group is going to look like in in 20 years time, we might have hundreds of marketplaces, you know, and, and yeah, I don't know. So in terms of that, one of the main focuses we have within the business has been very customer centric. We're trying to be customer first. We want to be customer driven. We want to make sure that we are providing the customer with the right sort of solution. So once we get them into our ecosystem, they never leave um, because they have no reason to leave. And I think that's the main the main edge, we will get the reinvestments, et cetera. So once we pay for, for a client, once we pay for a customer to get on board, um, and there is obviously an initial cost, we're trying to make sure we keep them, keep them there. And it's been a long, hard journey. And I think this year, we probably at the best place we've ever been in, in terms of, um, in terms of that. And I feel like we are doing much better building trust, brand awareness, um, and making sure that those customers are happy. So it's a little bit of a, of a soft answer because I know those are soft skills, but I think they're very, very important soft skills that will help the business grow. I just want to add to what you just said, Aubrey, and I agree with you 100%. The other advantage we do have, Lee, is the fact that we are able to trial new strategies before we take them to other marketplaces. So we get that first in there advantage of having a strategy work for us and gain momentum before we share it with some of our other marketplaces on the global um, team level. Yeah, I think, I think, I mean, to that point, it's, it's sort of like we are our own little incubator of what works, and then we want to share best practice with, with our other partners. You know, at the end of the day, for the two reasons that you've already pointed out, Marikin, the more successful our partners are, the more successful the virtuous cycle will work. The more successful the virtuous cycle will work, the more all the partners will win. So not just wealth migrate. So, you know, it, it's every, it's in everyone's interests uh, to win together because the more we win together the more we're going to get access to better stock the more we get access to better stock the more we're going to get investors that want to participate so everyone will be winning and so whatever we can learn in wealth migrate from a best practice perspective we want to share with our partners to help them be successful absolutely scott if our investors win we win if we win our investors win it's exactly a give and take exactly then um, there has been another question that has popped into the Q&A box. I'm not sure whether, Aubrey, you want to take it, but I think maybe this one's for you, Marikin. Okay. So are we using AI to target our marketing? <laughs> that, is, that is a very interesting question. Um, that is definitely um, more, Aubrey. I'm still still catching up on that side of things, but we are. and. Um, 
not that much, but we'll continue to increase how we use it um, going forward. So we've digitalized our marketing quite significantly. We are a relatively small team now. We're aiming to upskill and upscale our team as we grow, um, which allows more opportunity for us to um, implement AI in our everyday marketing deliverables. Yeah, um, and I, I can definitely jump on there. In terms of the actual technicalities, um, Lynn, if, um, I'm more than happy to speak, um, speak you through them. But in terms of, of we, we tried a third-party platform last year that overlaid um, over Google, Facebook, et cetera. That didn't drive results for us. And I think it didn't drive results for us because we are a new um, marketplace um, and sort of like a very new genre as well. There aren't many players doing what, what we do. So what we do now in terms of the automation space is we do play um, within Google and Facebook and you utilize their automation. And it is a percentage of our budget. So because our budget's not that big at the moment, a lot of it can be very targeted and we know what our targeted market needs to look like. Um, in terms of the, the AI space, you know, that, that would obviously target itself a little bit better, et cetera, as time grows, but we would get to a much better space once we have more budget. So for me, the AI is icing on the top because we know what our target market looks like and we can input that. And once we've inputted that and once we reach that cap, we'll we'll push out into, into other genres as icing on the cake. Great, thanks Aubrey and Marikin um, for explaining that. Um, I'm just going through the chat box and I see that there aren't any more comments or queries at the moment. So I'm just gonna hand over back to Scott, but if there are any questions or queries, comments that you wanna post, please continue to do, do so as Scott proceeds um, and we will get the panelists to answer them for you. Brilliant, so just conscious of time and I think uh, Marikin, if you can just stop sharing your screen so I can share my screen. I just want to round it off and you know, remind everyone that what we've spoken about is that to do the scaling and to unlock this virtuous cycle that Marikin and Aubrey have kindly shared is that that is why we've gone to see this. Um, you know, often investors tend to only get the opportunity to invest on in IPO level. This is kind of you know, at the private equity and, and we're in this kind of growth phase now, as I showed you earlier in the S curve. And you don't really want to start with a rank startup um, so, so, you know, there's a tremendous opportunity, but it goes up the value chain. We do have different incentives. So if you investing through CEDARS, then you automatically get the top because uh, CEDARS come in as one lump sum institutional investor. If you're from South Africa or some of the other countries where you can't go through the CEDARS platform, then we can help you off platform. And you can see that if you're doing it on the CEDARS platform, the minimum investment is 10 pounds. If you're doing it off the CEDARS platform, uh, then our minimum investment is $10,000. And you can see the different discounts that you get here um, as an investor. So quite significant discounts off our priced equity round. Just some of our investors, before we went live with Cedars, we had over a million dollars that was already uh, pre-funded, 75% coming from our follow-on investors. We've got Jonathan Busserstrom's Angel, Angel List Syndicate, which is over 4,000 prop tech investors in America. So that's really quite exciting for us. We've got Simple Capital, which is our lead investor, um, through into our priced equity investment. And then a number of people have asked us why we're raising a safe note. It's the most advanced fundraising instrument in America, and it allows for a bridge round for a bigger raise. So we're scaling out our partnerships, as we've discussed at the moment. We're building out our global compliance, and then we're going to a priced equity round. And that's why we're doing the safe note, where investors immediately get the uplift. So to put in perspective, if there's a 25% discount and the share is $1, you will effectively get the shares at 75 cents. So you're getting an automatic uplift of 25%. There are also a number of perks. This is a new thing on Cedars, which we're quite excited about. You know, anyone that invests will get access to our investor test. Um, depending on the levels you invest, there'll be access to our Wealth Hacker, which is our annual um, ongoing like-minded community. We've got the investor fees. So again, you can have your investor fees reduced uh, for your life, depending on how you, you know, what level you invest. And then we've got the investment uh, committee options. But what's also exciting is that's all for you. If you invest with purpose in mind as well, you can actually gift to others investor tests. You can invest, uh, gift to others access to the Wealth Hacker, and you can actually gift to others the starter pack as well, which is really, really quite exciting because now not only are you benefiting, but you're helping others benefit. And as Lee mentioned, we do have a, a strategic partnership with B1G1, 
and we're giving away a day's education for every single person that invests. So it can have a significant impact on um, you know, children around the world from an education space. So if you go along two seaters, you can see that we are actually live. Oh, sorry, someone said me Canadians are withdrawing money due to crypto. So you can see here that we're live. We've got 770,000 pounds from 288 investors. And you can go through, you can read about all the details. You can watch the video. You can literally read all about the campaign and what, what it's all about, et cetera. And if you want to participate, come and get involved in the discussion, ask anything you want. You can see that we've had quite detailed conversations and discussions um, around uh, with different people and or you can ask for any documents you want um, and different people can come in and actually ask for the documents. So Lee, what I'd like to do is just, just put up a poll. You know, I'm always fascinated and intrigued by what people are thinking and how they can get value. While you know, Lee puts up that poll, these are the people that you can talk to. So Alexander Oesthuizen is part of our Global Wealth Group at, a, you know, at the group level, and he helps people invest into the company. So any questions that he's got or you've got around the company, where we're going, what are we doing? And then we've also got Luke Bolton that is the person representing us from Simple Capital. So if you're wanting to talk to our external partner, our lead investor within the priced equity round, then you can talk to him. So do me a favor and fill in the, the um, panel it's, or, or the survey. It's always fascinating for us to see what different people are interested in. And I think, Lee, what, what is quite interesting for us is that if we take this last three weeks, we've done three webinars now. The first webinar we did was on the business, why are we scaling and kind of the, the pitch deck of the business. Last week, we did it on our partners and what is our idea to scale through partnership. This week, we've done it through our B2C platform and how we grow our virtuous cycle with our B2B strategy. Next week, it's the chairman and the CEO, myself and Willem van der Post, talking about value creation and how you create value through scaling. And then finally, in two weeks time, on the 8th of March, we've got a panel of prop tech investors, some incredible prop tech investors from America, England, and India, representing as much as we can kind of the, the global stage in prop tech and talking about the major trends and what is happening. So if you haven't watched the previous two webinars, highly recommend it. And there's another two uh, coming up in terms of the process before we wrap up and close out with the Cedars campaign. So again, here are the contact details. I'm not sure if anyone's got any further questions or anything else they wanna know or anything we haven't answered, but um, yeah, over to you, Lee, in terms of where we're going and, and kind of thank you very much to Marika and, and to Aubrey for sharing what's happening in the B2B space. You guys really have opened my eyes to what is possible in the B2B space. And I love the fact that we're marrying together the education and the investment space because that's where it becomes truly dynamic. B2C, Scott, but you're welcome. It was Did great I say being B2C? here. Did I you say said B2B? B2B. Yeah. B2C, B2C. <laughs> so yes i've just gone through the chat box and uh through the q a box and there don't seem to be any more questions so um congratulations uh our panelists you seem to have um either provided enough information or um boggled everyone's mind but before we say goodbye i'd like to do a round robin of closing comments so marikin is there anything else that you'd like our attendees to know any closing comments I think we're on the verge of something really exciting. Obviously, we all buy into this business. We've all invested on the platform. But if you have any additional questions at a later stage or would like a PDF copy of what we've presented, um, please reach out to us. We're always happy to have conversations. Um, I think that's, that's a crux I want to leave everyone with is we're always happy to take a conversation. Thanks, Marikin. Aubrey, do you have any closing pearls of wisdom or comments for our attendees? Um, thanks, Lee. Yeah, I think I, I agree with what Marikin said. We are on a really good tra trajectory at the moment. It feels like we are in a good space. We're in a very um, positive space. Um, I can feel how the company's grown since I've joined and we've really got some tangible momentum um, in sort of like the last six months. So yeah, really, really positive from, from everyone on board. Well done to Marikin and Scott. I think it was an excellent presentation. Um, and please, if anyone has any questions, comments, um, or ideas in terms of how we can expand, please reach out. More than happy to always, always um, listen to any ideas. Thank you so much. 
Thanks, Aubrey. Scott. It's always hard to follow the two of them, but I think in simple terms, what I would say is that there's an African proverb if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And I think what Marikin has shared tonight in the presentation shows the power of community, the power of partnerships, the power of the technology, and ultimately the power of how to make that virtuous uh, cycle work all together. And that for me is the underlying essence of the African proverb. And as most people will or won't know, but we built this company based on, on nature's principles. And again, you, you know, a bird flying in a flock can fly 70% further than a bird flying on its own. Hopefully tonight you've seen how it's all now starting to come together um, with not only the different team members within the team, but equally within the different partners, the different strategies. So, yep, I agree with both of them. I think we're in an exciting period. It's why we're in the scaling growth capital raise with CEDARS. And this year is going to be exciting. And we look forward to, you know, welcoming you, you and having you as part of our journey. Thanks very much, Scott. So to our panelists tonight, thank you for making yourself available and for the very valuable and exciting information that you shared with our attendees. To our attendees, thank you so much for choosing to spend the last hour with us. We really do appreciate it. And we appreciate the interaction, the questions and the comments as they've gone through. So to those who asked for us to reach out and provide extra information or to contact you, our team will be getting hold of you tomorrow. And for any of those who have watched and think that this could add value to someone else, please do share our webinar series with those people. If you would like to reach out to me and uh, put me in contact with um, people that we can uh, chat to, please feel free to do so and we can get other members of our team roped into that. But wherever you are in the world, thank you very much for joining us. We hope that you are surrounded by love, that you are healthy, that you are in a good space. And we look forward to seeing you on our webinar next week. So take care, everybody. Good night. Good night, everyone.